Hey guys, it's Anthony from The Rag Company and welcome to Wash Wednesday. Today we're here with Gabe. And Gabe, what kind of gem do we have here? We have a 1989 Toyota 4Runner with 37,000 original miles. Okay guys, so we've had a wide variety of vehicles in Wash Wednesday. Everything from modified cars to trucks. And when we saw this, we knew we had to have it on here. Pretty much original state out of 1989. And that's absolutely amazing. Right when we saw it, we were hit with like a blast from the past. And not just that, Gabe here is also one of the very first employees of the rag company. Ta-da, but I teach on the side, so that's why I'm so, not. I'm not here. He's moved on to be a teacher and that's fine. <laughs> he left us a little while ago and we still miss him, but he still comes around from time to time. He collects some of the coolest Toyotas that we've seen and which has been really awesome to have you bring stuff yeah. like this. So today we're going to be doing a wash, right? We're going to be using soap and water, probably what they used back in 1989 <laughs> instead. Yeah. And then we're going to be doing a two bucket soap and water wash with our cyclone mitts and then of course drying it with our microfiber towels. So are you ready to get things started? Let's get rolling. Let's do it. Okay guys, so Gabe used to edit some of the first videos that we had here on the Rag Company YouTube channel. So you know a thing or two about washing cars? Yeah, I would say so. Learning from the junk man and Levi of course. Yeah, so you guys know the junk man. He spent probably more time with the junk man than I think any of us did. So lots, so true. Of, lots of videos, lots of editing going on. So he knows exactly what to do. We're gonna be doing a pre-spray with water first, and then we're gonna be doing the pre-spray with foam. So while he's doing this, going from top to bottom, I'm gonna start pumping up our IK Foam 9. All right, here we go. Woo, I don't think this thing has ever hit water, Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> it probably has never seen water or rain in its day. Man, since I bought this thing, it's just been sitting in my garage because I'm too afraid to drive it. I don't blame you though. I mean, it's basically a museum piece, so uh, it's pretty mint. And when I say pretty mint, I have some pretty high standards with all the cars I've seen. And wait till you guys see the interior. It's like, it's something else. There you go, okay. Nice, very good. You didn't use a rag company towel, what's wrong with you? Oh my gosh! <laughs> so it's a microfiber t-shirt made by Volcom, it's okay. How's it looking, Gabe? Yeah, it's looking good. I'm trying to keep downwind, or upwind, should I say, from the water, so it doesn't spray me. If it hits Anthony, that's okay. That's just fine. All right, Anthony, I think it's wet enough. All right, so, Gabe, you have seen these things, right? Oh, Oh yeah. You know a thing or two about foam. Mm -hmm. Okay, so guys, this is a pump sprayer. All right, we get a lot of questions on what these things are. The IK sprayers are pump sprayers. I hand pump this to max pressure. We have the bigger foam nine and we have the smaller uh, IK 1.5s, which we'll show you here in a minute. But uh, this thing's amazing because essentially it's a foam cannon in a pressurized sprayer. Right. So are you ready for this? Let's do it, let's see it. Look at that foam. I love this thing so much. This thing's amazing, all right? And for reference, guys, I have Optimum Car Wash in here. I have it diluted four ounces to the five liters that I have in here. Hmm? That looks nice. That looks really nice. So much easier than getting your traditional soap <laughs> out and wiping it all over the car. Great sales pitch, I love it. Thank it's sounding, you. It's sounding Brought to you by the Rag Company, Wash Wednesday. Very Trademark. convincing. <laughs> if I wanted the more powdery snow foam like foam, I'd put the dry foam filter inside here, but I really like the dwelling foam to be able to pull off the dirt and grime and things like that off the car and onto the ground. So Anthony, are we going to get the mitts out and wipe this off or are we going to spray this with water? Good question. So. Guys, there's a million different ways to wash a car. We could let the foam sit on here, rinse off the foam, re-foam it, re-hit it again with the mitts. 
We could go straight into a mitt wash after this. And there's really no right or wrong. It just kind of depends on the situation. It depends on how dirty the vehicle is. In this case, there's only some light dust on the Forerunner because it's been sitting in your garage. Yeah. So what we did, we already rinsed off everything with the hose. So we're just doing our pre-spray with our foam nine or IK nine. And then we're gonna be going over it with the two bucket wash after this foam sits and dwells for a little longer. Sweet. Anything I can help you with? I'm gonna grab the, uh, the IK 1.5 with the power clean in it. You got and it. the uh, the bucket with the brush. Okay guys, so I'm gonna have Gabe start on the wheels. So this is the 1.5 with power clean in it. So we need to make sure that's pumped up all the way until it has max pressure. And you'll know it's max pressure when this pressure release valve kind of starts hissing at you. Okay. And you can see it's already kind of starting to raise. Yep. So it's almost there. Couple more pumps. Oh, there we go. There we go. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and spray down that whole wheel. Okay, so while you're doing the wheels, I'm gonna continue foaming the rest of the Forerunner, letting that foam sit and dwell. You got the wheels with the brushes, right? You got it, I got you. You know how to do this, all right. This is coming from a pump sprayer. This is amazing. A pump sprayer, that thick. All right, let's go check on Gabe over here and see if he's doing everything all right. All right, Anthony, I'm on my last wheel over here. All right. Laying it down with a 1.5. Yep. this foam sitting on here for a hot minute. Yeah. We are in direct sunlight, so we wanna start washing here really soon. Right. So we have both of our buckets here for the two bucket wash method. Have you done the two bucket before? Yep. Okay, so you know exactly what to do. Yeah. So I have the soap bucket, we have the rinse bucket. For the guys watching that may not know what I'm talking about, basically what we're gonna do is go panel by panel. We're gonna use the soapy wash mitt. We're going to wash the panel, dunk it back into the water, scrape it onto the bottom of the grit guard, take it out, wring it out, back into the soap water, and then back onto the vehicle. So this way you're not cross contaminating too many things and you're not picking up that dirt that you're putting back into the bucket. Right. If that makes sense. So yeah. anyways, we're gonna grab our mitts here. We have the cyclone mitts. We're gonna split it up, work from top to bottom. You get this side, I'll get that side. Perfect. All right, Gabe. So I think now's the time to start talking about what this thing is, where you found it and how you got it. People wanna know about this Forerunner. I'm a kind of a Craigslist connoisseur, so. Kay. One day after I got off of work, I got on a Craigslist and I saw a guy posting a 1989 Toyota 4Runner, first gen for sale. He said it only had 37,000 original miles. Yeah. So of course, I was like, holy cow, I gotta see this to see if it's real. I went out there and looked and it was real. Yeah. 37,000 original miles. How old was the owner? Like who owned it? What, like? The owner, was, he's about, in his 60s, late 60s, his brother was a little older than him. His brother originally owned it, uh, bought it brand new in Colorado. Unfortunately, his brother uh, fell ill. So he bought it from his brother, brought it back to Idaho, which is why you kind of see the Colorado and Idaho plates on it. Yeah. And unfortunately, it just doesn't fit for him. Okay. And with these old forerunners and these Japanese cars, they have a tendency of being a little bit smaller. But yeah, it's all original, untouched. So the interesting thing about this particular 4Runner is it is an SR5 model, Okay. but the SR5 models had the chrome bumpers, whereas this particular model, if you look, it doesn't have the chrome bumpers. Like um, has, is it painted or are those just the black bumpers that are on there? Those are black bumpers. So 
The bumpers, the rims uh, are a little bit different. They're more of the base model style. Okay. So it's kind of a weird blend between that base model and the SR5, but it is an SR5. Toyota fans out there love the 22RE motors, the four cylinders. And this one is the 3.0, which some guys call it the three point slow. I've had a couple of Toyotas now that have the 3.0 motor in them and they do the trick for me. Awesome, so tell me about the other Toyotas you have because we all know you here as a Toyota collector. You have some of the coolest older Toyotas that we've seen and they're all mint. I have a 1994 Toyota pickup truck. That one is an SR5, uh, originated here in Boise, Idaho. Yeah, and from, that, the, from the Toyota dealership, right? Yeah, from Peterson's, and that one was from the original owner as well. So I was lucky to find that one. And then my dad has a 1980 FJ40. Oh wow. Blue, original blue with the white top, which makes it pretty So is that where the addiction awesome. came from? It's probably from your dad? That's where I just, my love for Toyotas really, really began. That's the thing, I mean, anybody can appreciate an old Toyota, mainly for the fact that you know that they're worth so much now, right? Because the resale value is absolutely insane. I mean, for a normal consumer, that is. I mean, your, your uncle, for example, could have a mint Toyota sitting in his garage that has, you know, 13,000, 14,000 miles. It'll never go down. And it'll never go down. Even if it had 100,000 miles, it would still have, be worth a lot of money. Given yeah. the fact that Toyotas go for, I mean, there's some guys who have had Toyotas go up to a million miles. And that's kind of what I tell people nowadays too, is that when they're buying new vehicles, right, try to buy something that you're gonna get some good resale value off right. of it. Because a vehicle is the second biggest investment that most people make. So if you can try to get some of your money back, if not maybe all of your money back, then why not, right? New Toyota Tacomas, for example. Oh um, yeah, those like, are crazy. Those are crazy. Guy will buy one uh, 2016 and sell it in 2018 for maybe a grand less, or if not, in some cases, they'll sell it for the exact same or more, yeah. depending and they'll on the put truck. 10,000, 15,000 miles on it and basically drive it for free. Yeah. Insane. insane. Yeah. Like if I was going to go out and buy a car today that I knew I was going to get my money back on, I'd go out and buy a Tacoma, hands down. Hands down. Probably yeah. a TRD Pro because those are just, those are awesome. They're pretty slick. They're aren't pretty they? slick. Yeah. <laughs> I know that we talked about going back and forth on the different panels every time you wash, but the nice thing about these is they have two sides, so you can flip them. See, he's plugging for us. You know, he doesn't even work here anymore, and he's still plugging for us. Thank you, Gabe. God bless you. Anytime, Anthony. <laughs> I got to teach you guys here too, right? <laughs> yeah. It's a taller vehicle, but it's not too tall to where I can't reach up and get the top half of it. I think Gabe missed his spots, but I, I don't know. I, I don't know I think about I got a that. couple inches on him, so. I mean, I know I'm not the tallest guy, Anthony, but I am pretty good at covering. <laughs> 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 we've already hit the whole paint we've hit the roof we've hit the wheels right. i think we're just washing it for fun i think so i think our talking and joking is kind of we're just submissively going around and around in circles you know it's one thing you know to buy a new car right so you've yeah. had this for a couple months now but yeah. it doesn't really feel like it's yours in my opinion until you wash it like the, right. like the first wash that's when you get to know the car that's when you get to know it really well and I feel like I'm getting to know your car, which is wow. nice. Ooh, or your, whole your, new level. Your, your truck, your forerunner here, and uh, and this definitely has a lot, a lot more soul. I don't know how else to describe it. You know what I mean? It's, it's like got, a time capsule. You you sit in it and you look at it and you're like, holy cow, this is from the '80s, but it's like modern day, brand new. Yeah, exactly. Same year from when I was born, '89, man. 28 years old. It's pretty old. Pretty insane. Paint still looks awesome too. Okay, so the 4Runner is officially washed. We've hit the paint, we've hit the wheels, but guys, we are in direct sunlight, so that means we have limited time. We need to start rinsing this thing, we need to start drying it. We don't want any water spots here. So, grab the hose. You got it. I'll go grab the drying towels and we'll get started. I know Anthony was giving me a hard time about how tall I am, so I'm gonna start from the roof, spray as far over as possible, and I'm actually gonna work my way down the windshield, that way it kinda goes into and onto the hood. How's he doing, guys? Is he doing all right? Is he talking crap about me? Be honest, you can tell me. Yeah, he probably is. Good, all right, well, I found some drying towels. I sure hope so. You know, and the thing is, we <laughs> like Gabe. Gabe's a good guy, and you know, we know that this 4Runner doesn't have any type of protection on it, so I went ahead and I pulled out the good stuff. So we're gonna be using some Optimum spray wax on here. 
protecting this thing, right? Eventually it's gonna get a, probably a full correction. It does have some squirrels, it does have some slight marring and scratching. I'm, oh my God! <laughs> I was just saying something nice about you! Oh. Now you're spraying me! Did I get you? Yeah, you got me. Oh. You got me good, you got Dane as well. Dane, hold on. Let me get you a little... I'm so sorry. Fiber towel there for you. So like I was saying, I actually, you know what? Hey, forget the wax, dude. Gabe sprayed me, he doesn't get wax anymore, dude. Forget that. I'll probably use it to make it easier on myself because I like using it as a drying aid. Makes the drying process much nicer. It smells good too. But for the drying process, we have the famous Twist and Shout drying towel. This is our most absorbent drying towel that we have. Our Twist Pile Loop design, and it's a 70-30 blend of a Buttershaw suede edge. I'll probably let Gabe try this because this is a newer towel and he hasn't used it yet. I am going to be using, of course, the Platinum Puffle in the 20 by 40 size. 70-30 blend, Buttershaw suede edge. Can't ask for much better than that. Then we'll be following up on the wheels. They're small wheels. We're using the edgeless miner for the wheels, using a dark towel to dry everything so we don't ruin a nice light colored towel. So, you almost done, Gabe? What are you doing? You, my friend, or I should say friend, you sprayed me. You, my nemesis, you get the twist and shout drying towel. Ooh. You haven't had a chance to use this yet, have you? I have not. I, this towel came out shortly after I uh, left to go teach uh, teach kids. I mean, mold the minds yeah. of our of our youth. How noble of you! Very good, noble, good sir. So, all right. I was saying how I wasn't going to let you use the Optimum Car Wax, but I will let you use it. Uh, you have used this before, right? No, actually, I've only seen it on camera. So this is probably one of my favorite products. It makes a great drying aid, and also, as you can see by the way, the water is just kind of kind of not really, it's not sheeting off, but it's kind of sticking to the surface and it's not beating properly. That's how I know that there's no protection on the vehicle's paint. So we're gonna do a little something for you. Ah, add, some, add, add some car wax to it. You're so sweet. So, I don't care what people say. What? All what? right, so I'm gonna let you get started on this side. I'm gonna go ahead and do a couple sprays for you. Okay. Do a couple sprays per panel and I'll let you start drying and you're gonna see just how smooth it is with the twist and shout. You got it. Ooh, so smooth, Anthony. Isn't that nice? That's so nice. What's it smell like? Like cherry? I, oh, you're I, so wrong. I. It's um, pina colada. Like the song? Yeah, yeah. Okay. like the song. I like the song. I bet you Anthony likes that song. That is drying, very nice. Hit the wind, oh, guys, sliding windows. Check that out, that's a blast from the past. Going through, spreading the wax as we're drying. So that's what's kind of cool. Now, a lot of people will say, hey guys, you're putting car wax on an area with water. Aren't you diluting the wax? It's not going to last as long as the bottle says. Yes, that's, that's an obvious thing. Um, if we're just spraying the wax on the surface, which hasn't been decontaminated, it hasn't been clayed, I don't, I don't expect that car wax to last the full five to seven months that it typically would last if I were to apply it on its own. I'm just using it as a drying aid. If I can get a couple months protection out of there, I am happy. I am very happy. So if I wanted to do a full waxing the proper way, what I would do is I would clay the surface and then I would hit it with some type of uh, uh, rubbing alcohol wipe down, like an IPA wipe down or using paint prep. After that, I've known that the paint is clear and clean and then I know that the wax would last a lot longer if I applied it on its own. But this is an easy way and a fun way to dry a car. So that's why I like doing it just like this. Working good, Anthony. Nice. Good to hear. Silky smooth like butter. I don't know, is that a saying? <laughs> if it is, and it is it now. It could be. It ought to be. You could do the other method where some people, I've seen them, they go like this. The drag? The, the drag. drag and pull? Okay. The drag and pull. I'm a big fan of that one myself. Today I'm kind of a mixture of a folder and a scruncher. I haven't really decided which one I'm going with, but I think the, it's kind of like a. Well, you're just like this? Kind of, okay. yeah, kind of uh, like that where I have the intention to fold, but I'm just kind of feeling lazy. It is preference, that's the nice thing. Mm -hmm. I will usually save the top areas, like the hood if it wasn't in direct sunlight, or the roof for last, and I'll hit all these side panels first because remember, this car doesn't have any protection on it, meaning that there's no water beating, so that water is actually just falling right off. So I wanna hit that first before that leaves a streak or a water spot. And actually the dragon pole, Anthony, would be best for the roof. Oh, for short guys like me. It would. Go like this and Exactly. <laughs> then there's the the just the kind of whack it attack. <laughs> 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 no, I guess not. 
Don't whack it. Don't whack it. Don't, don't, don't do this. Don't do this. Forerunner is looking awesome. It's looking glossy. Um, like I said, guys, it still needs a paint correction. So if you're seeing swirls and things like that, it's already there. <laughs> whack it. So don't, so don't take that. Uh, too yeah. seriously. Don't take that too seriously. Yeah. That's what I was looking for. If you see Anthony's whack attack, I know you want to post a comment saying, what is this guy thinking or why is he promoting? <laughs> this style of drying method, just know it's Anthony <laughs> and secretly in our hearts, we have a special place for him. Oh. All right, so guys, we're gonna grab the, car, the Optimum Car Wax. We're gonna hit the wheels. We are going to be drying it today with the Miner. Um, and after we've hit that, I think we're gonna be done with a wash. Let's knock it out. Let's do it. So again, we're gonna just spray on the wheel. We're not getting the rubber, we're just getting the wheels. I always like to start with the outer ring and then work my way in. Now, these are just your basic stock forerunner wheels. Some of you guys on those nice trucks have a lot fancier wheels. It's just working your way through the crevices and making sure that you get every little spot and detail to make your wheels look purry. All right, guys, so we are officially done washing the forerunner. So, I think we did a pretty good job. We washed it, used some foam. Uh, Learned a new drying method, the whack attack method, right? Yeah, yeah. You, you learn a lot of new methods here on Wash Wednesday. We're always coming up with new things, so make sure to stay tuned for every episode. But uh, anyway, so the Forerunner's protected. Looks awesome, looks glossy. Uh, like we said before, the paint still needs to be corrected, but we'll save that for another day. Uh, but I say for now, I wanna go for a drive. Let's do it. All right, let's go for it. Let's hit it. Okay guys, so we are in the Forerunner. As usual on Wash Wednesdays, we always like to go for a drive if we can uh, and kind of experience the vehicle and, and kind of check out the interiors. Uh, inside the Forerunner, it is red. Red it's on red. You have red garnet metallic for the exterior color, which they made in 87, 88, and 89. And then you have the red interior. It's a hit or miss. A lot of people have a tendency of not liking red interior. I personally kind of freaked out when I first saw it, yeah. but it grew on me. I love dude, it. I dig it, dude. It's it's unique. It's awesome. Like, and it's it's totally 80s. Everything in uh, in this vehicle looks new. I, I can't explain that enough. Um, everything from these these switches to the clock to all of this, and I think that this truck or this you know this Forerunner was garaged for probably the longest time I mean out of its life I mean the carpet I don't think the carpet has ever been brushed in its lifetime I mean what else about it really just kind of caught you when you were when you were interested in buying it like what did you like about it the most the condition I mean a lot of these forerunners people beat, beat them they beat use them, up, them for yeah. off-roading they lift them they add accessories the top has never even been off this thing. Wait, you're still so telling me the top comes off this thing? The top comes off, so in a I sense, like things where the top comes off, so that's funny you say that. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool though. So, I mean, I, so when I refer to this as a truck, it is, it is a truck. It is a truck, essentially. If you were to have behind their seats, if there was a cab, it would be similar to your regular Toyota pickups. Basically, that whole top comes out and you just have a longer bed but then you have seats back there. Right. So you could do open seating, kind of like Jeep style. Yeah, and Toyota did it back in the day, I believe to compete with Ford and their Bronco, as well as Jeeps were Little doing Bronco. it. So you had Jeep, Ford Bronco, you also had Chevy with the Blazer, I believe. Yeah. With the ability to have the top off as well. We've just come up on another vintage Toyota here. Oh, it's a dirty one. What is this? That's pretty cool looking. This, this is my Toyota pickup. Wait, we're at your house? We lost the camera crew, so I figured we detour really quick and stall. Dude, this is awesome. So this is what I'm talking about. And you have another vehicle, don't you? Yeah, I actually have a 98 Forerunner with really low miles. And then nice. my girlfriend has that Vanagon Synchro. Oh, that over there? Yeah. You guys got all sorts of treasures here. Okay, so I want to talk about driving this truck. Um, you let me drive the Forerunner on the way to go pick up a new nozzle for our hose. It drives and feels like a new car, and I know that it makes sense because it only has you know 37,000 miles on it, but the fact that it's 30 years old and it still drives like new. Do you feel bad when you drive it? I do. Put um, miles on it? It's interesting. You can drive a car really hard, but if you maintain it, it'll last a long time. And you can also drive a car very little, and if you don't maintain it, 
it will still, you'll have cracked bushings, cracked uh, rubber pieces. So if they're sitting for too long, for example, right? It, exactly. So even though this car has 37,000 miles, when looking at a car, you have to figure, okay, is it going to be just as good? Yeah, like, are the belts been changed? Has the fluid been right. changed? Things like that. Is it going to be a new car, or is it essentially has it been a new car that's been sitting that you're going to have to do that maintenance on anyway? Yeah, and that's what I had to determine when purchasing this vehicle. Tell me a couple of the things that you like, some of the quirks, I guess, of the 4Runner that you find the most interesting for uh, being a 30-year-old vehicle. Well, the biggest quirk that I find funny, when you have to pull out the key, you actually... I'll turn it off for just a sec. You actually have to click this black button before releasing the key, otherwise it will not release the key. But now, overall, it, it, it drives really nice, it handles really nice. It's just crazy that you found this, because this is something that people would seek out, you know, around the country to be able to find something like this with low mileage, and we were able to, or you were able to find this locally here in Boise as like a hidden gem. The original... <laughs> just, Tim is just bouncing around in the back of that. Poor Tim. Woo! The, uh, I don't have it here, but the cool thing with the Colorado plate is it has all those stickers, registration stickers, since new. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's pretty thick, the stickers are on the that license plate. It's like 30 years worth of stickers. The biggest talk online that I've seen in forums um, are the fact that these cars have a tendency, the value of them keeps going up. Yeah. And you kind of have that mixed group where you have some people who are like, why would anybody on earth pay that much for a vehicle that is almost 30 years old. But what was this car new? I mean, do you, do you, do you know what you know this was new? Actually, like, Anthony, all the original stickers are in the glove box. What? You got the original bro brochure, the pamphlet. Dude, this is nuts. This is really cool to see. All right, so here's the window sticker. <laughs> That's nuts. I don't know if you guys can see that right there. $18,897. So 3.0 liter V6, electronic fuel injection, five speed manual uh, with overdrive trans, two speed transfer case, automatic locking front hubs, SR5. And then optional stuff is cruise control, rear heater, fabric sport seat package, air conditioner, carpet and floor mats. This is insane, dude. So like I said, it is an SR5, but the big thing that uh, a lot of guys will see when they see this car is they'll ask, well, this is an SR5, but it doesn't have power locks. It doesn't have power windows. It doesn't have power mirrors. Um, but those were all options that you could actually order with the SR5 package back in the time. This thing's cool because it even has the original order sheet from the original owner. So I am officially the second owner of this vehicle with all paperwork and documentation. Having this vehicle, I mean, do you see yourself selling it? Because I know it's going to catch the interest of some people watching Wash Wednesday and saying, hey, you know, I want one or I want to search for one. Would you ever sell it? Or are you keeping this? Or is everything for sale for the right price? I would say everything is for sale for the right price, but for me personally, I, I love this because this is a vehicle, an iconic vehicle that I've always wanted. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap up this week's Wash Wednesday. Gabe, thank you so much for being on the show, man. Thank you, Anthony. Uh, thanks for sharing this gem with uh, me and you guys watching. Uh, so if they wanna see more pictures of this thing, where would they go? My, uh, my Instagram, probably at Garcia G2. Okay. Garcia G2, okay. Follow Gabe if you'd like and see more pictures of this awesome 4Runner. Um, as usual, guys, if you like this video, hit that like button, subscribe for more Wash Wednesdays, comment below and tell us what you think or if we did anything wrong. As always, stay tuned for more videos right here at The Rag Company. Don't, don't, don't do this. Don't do this. First you whack on, then you whack on.